Hey everybody and welcome back to Sketch to See. It's Jamie today. Uh, like Sean and I discussed in our interview, I'm going to start to get a bit more involved in the filming when the episodes aren't too technical. So here I am. In this episode, I'm going to discuss the process of naming a yacht, or at least how this has looked for us, and all the things that we thought about. I'm also going to let you in on what we've decided for our name. So be sure to stay tuned to the end and find out what we're thinking. Aside from this being a name that is meaningful or makes you happy, there are a few factors to take into consideration, depending on what you plan on doing with your yacht long term. You need to think about everything from where your yacht will be registered, and if the name is already taken in this region, to whether you will be sailing your yacht internationally and if you will ever be chartering it in the future. Let's start with the personal meaning. The name of a smaller boat or yacht can sometimes be something that the owner just enjoys the sound of or finds funny. A couple of our favorites are the Codfather or Nacho Boat, <laughs> but quite often the name of a seafaring yacht has real significance for the owner. Some people have moved away from this in modern times, but there's a long tradition of giving yachts feminine names. While the exact origin of this isn't known, there are a couple streams of thought. One is that early seafaring vessels were named after goddesses or mythical figures that would keep the boat from harm or bring luck. The other is based on language. Many languages, including Old English, had a system of gendered grammar where inanimate objects received a masculine or feminine tone. Boats were feminine and therefore necessitated feminine names. Even a ship's first voyage is known as her maiden voyage. Feminine again. Now though, the belief has shifted a bit in that as long as the name is chosen with care and there are positive associations with it, it follows marine etiquette, like nothing that sounds like you're in distress or nothing profane, and you have a proper naming ceremony prior to the maiden voyage, you're good to go. There are plenty more theories and rules for this that you can find if you keep looking, but in the interest of efficiency, I'm going to stop there. I will say though, that while Sean and I aren't necessarily concerned with choosing a feminine name, we are in the camp that stands on tradition and it's more important to us to choose a meaningful name that we will give to our yacht during a traditional naming ceremony to ward off bad luck and ensure our safe passage. I mentioned some rules of marine etiquette before, and while I hope most people would be courteous enough to avoid things that are pretty obviously offensive, like no swearing, no racial slurs, nothing overtly sexual, you do need to be aware of words that are international double entendres. This is something that before we moved abroad, we may have remained wholly unaware of. As Canadians, I know that we have our own special dialect of English, and people are known to have a laugh at everything from our accents to our turns of phrase. But aside from the obvious curse words that every language has, I'd say our brand of English is pretty wholesome. It wasn't until we moved to Cayman and we were surrounded by Brits, South Africans, Australians, a whole host of other international native English speakers that we learned that some of our common phrases are not internationally appropriate. For instance, I do not ever tell anyone here that I am wearing a fanny pack which to me is simply a small tote that you would wear around your waist. And we also no longer to refer to the summer activity of heading to a cabin on the lake with your family as cottaging. I'm gonna leave it to any interested parties to look these up on your own, but all of this is to say that when you're choosing a name for your yacht, make sure you've covered your bases and looked up all possible meanings of the words. We were sure to keep this in mind when we chose our name. And if you stay tuned, I will let you know what that is. Another important consideration for us is that we did not want to culturally appropriate a name. This is similar to the previous consideration that I just mentioned in that we didn't want to offend anyone, but there's more to it. Cultural appropriation is the adoption of an element or elements of one culture or identity by members of another culture or identity. For example, we did a search of names that had to do with water spirits or mermaids and one of the names that we came across was Jengu. This word comes from the Duala, which are a Bantu ethnic group in Cameroon. 
We both instantly fell in love with the name. It's easy to say, easy to spell, it sounds lovely, and it carries the meaning that we were looking for. The problem is, it isn't ours. The more we research Jenggu, the more we realize how important it is to the Duala people. There's a long tradition of worshipping the Jenggu and their kind. In fact, there is still a cult that does so to this day. The Jenggu are said to bring good fortune to those that worship them, to cure disease, and to act as intermediaries between the living and those in the beyond. The cult has many worship ceremonies and rituals that are shrouded in secrecy, and among the Bakweri, the Jenggu cult is also an important part of a young girl's rite of passage into womanhood. All of these things made the word even more interesting and even more appealing, but they also took it further from anything that was part of mine or Sean's culture or history. Initially, we tried to justify this by saying that we were gonna be using the word in a positive, meaningful way, and that it would be honoring its origins. We also said that Cameroon is in part of the world that we likely will never sail to, so no one would know. But all of these justifications really fell flat. When it comes down to it, no matter our intentions or how much we like the word, it just isn't ours. It belongs to another culture, another people, and it's steeped in their history and traditions. I know it's just a word to us, and maybe it's that sailor superstition, but after really thinking about it, we believe that it's best for us to admire it from afar. The next consideration I'm gonna to touch on here, before letting you know what we actually did choose, is how easy the name of your yacht is going to be to say, spell, and understand in multiple different languages. I mentioned that part of the reason we like Jengu was the ease of it. In marine radio, you have to call the name of your vessel three times. Imagine having to call out something ridiculous that turned into a tongue twister when repeated three times. For example, fresh fish fry, fresh fish fry. Short and simple is going to be the best. Do you know the US Coast Guard actually has a regulation that the name can't be longer than 33 characters for their ships, which seems pretty reasonable. We also intend on doing one, if not multiple circumnavigations with our yacht, so whatever we choose shouldn't have any sneaky sounds or weird pronunciations. It needs to be easy enough for someone in, say, Indonesia to understand and pronounce as it would be for someone in Canada. The final thought we had is that it's important for the name of the yacht to fit the overall look and feel of the vessel. We've decided that our yacht is gonna be a deep red color. So as nice as it sounds, we would never name it Blue Skies Ahead. We think a yacht that did a really great job in fitting their name is HH6602 Night Fury. It's a beautiful black with a sneaky green eye on each bow that does a great job of evoking the yacht's namesake. So here's the moment that you've all been waiting for. All those things taken into consideration, what did we name our yacht? The answer, nothing yet. <laughs> Sorry guys, we are getting closer to a name all the time, but when we're thinking about all these factors, we're taking them really seriously because this is something that we're gonna be stuck with for a long time. Do you know there's actually a process and ceremony for denaming and renaming your yacht to avoid the bad luck and ensure safe passage. Anyway, the good news in the fact that we haven't chosen a name yet is that you can give us your input. We welcome all realistic suggestions, but we have a few front runners and we would love you guys to weigh in. So please leave your vote and why you think this in the comments below. In no specific order, our choices are Bring Me Along, Kaimana, Crazy Love, and Angel Share. Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed learning a bit more about what goes into naming a yacht. To learn more about us and our yacht project in general, check out the other aspects of our channel, like the construction updates and the interviews. If you've not already, please like and subscribe to our channel. Just to click the little bell and then you'll get notified when we release new episodes. For daily content, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And as always, if you have any questions or just want to talk yachts, please reach out to us at sketch2c at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.